Welcome back to Valley Spotlight. We are in Pesto's Test Kitchen baseball theme show today. I think it's baseball thing, but we're going to kick that baseball nachos How up a little bit. How did I know? How did I know? <laughs> so you can't go to a ball game. I can't go to a ball game, any ball game without nachos. But we're right. going to make some fancy schmancy awesome nachos. I don't right know if here. we're going to make fancy. We're just going to make nachos, and we're also going to make a classical Mexican dish that is more native to Mexico than okay. nachos, and it's called chilaquiles. Nachos came from what? Northern Mexico. Well, first off, they came from the Maya, uh -huh. who cultivated the corn because in the Yucatan, Peninsula where they really hung out a lot and that's where they made their home. The, the, the soil base was only so thick so they needed a crop that would be able to grow plants huh. and that crop happened to be corn. Okay. So they would take the corn dry it in the fall and then they would they would cook it back again and bring it back to life with water and then they would grind it on metal lava not metal but lava bowls and mm -hmm. things like that and they would turn it into masa and they know sometimes they would add you know rendered pork fat and things like that seasonings and then they would roll it into a ball press it into a tortilla and then put it onto a metal or coals just to make it yeah. toasted and that's how we get the chips that's how we get the chips. All that's right. how we, they also make flour tortillas, but that's not as, I'm not like those as much for nachos as well as I do the corn tortillas. And like a lot of dishes, it kind of came by accident and here's what we have left type yeah, of thing, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, Northern Mexico, they're native to Northern Mexico around the late 1940s. And I, I, from what I remember, what the lore is, just like everything where the martini was created, uh -huh. I believe it was a, a, a hotel owner that had a restaurant connected to it. And somebody came in very late at night and all he had left was was tortillas and cheese. Mm -hmm. So he made nachos, and that's how nachos kind of begin. They're more Tex-Mex than they are Mexican because Northern Cal was right close to Texas. Let's talk a little about the ingredients. Sure. Um, this is a, a green, We, you and I both like the green salsa, the verde. We, we like the salsa verde. Yeah, which so is? This one is a roasted tomatillo salsa verde. Tomatillo is a nightshade plant, similar to a green tomato, but it comes wrapped in this very cool little flower leathery skin, and you okay. take it out. Then we put it onto a flat, hot plate, and we char it on both sides. Along with the poblano chilies, maybe a serrano chili, the onions, the garlic, and then that ends up being all pureed together with some just simple water, okay. salt and pepper, and it turns into this amazing uh, salsa verde. I may have sampled that first. How about this one? This is, it looks just like a regular salsa, but it that's is, not really how it's called. It is, so similar technique, except we're gonna add very, very ripe tomatoes. We're gonna char those as well, along with the chilies, along with the garlic, and everything like that, but then we're going to put it into what we call a mocajete. Okay. So this, this is heavy duty. heavy duty mocajete, this is formed and this is in every Mexican kitchen in Mexico and a lot of kitchens throughout the United States, including mine. So, you know, the Italians, we have my one up there in the corner, the mortar and pistol. So that one's made out of marble, this okay. one's made out of lava rock. And what yes. you do is you really just smash down and it turns into this really beautiful, deep in flavor, roasted salsa. And if you're doing nachos, you can get some of the stuff at the store, but you made this and this. So I made some pico de gallo, uh -huh. and that is more like true Mexican salsa. That would be the condiment that they put on tacos and anything that they make. It's okay. just simple, fresh tomatoes, onions, lime juice, salt, pepper, cilantro, and that's it. And you did a pineapple salsa. And I did a pineapple salsa, similar technique but just pineapple. Tell me the difference between these jalapenos and these jalapenos. Well, this is what most people are familiar with. I mean, this is what you see at your grocer, the grocery store, and you see it on the shelf. We have some serrano chilies, we have some jalapenos, but this is the more classical if we were at the baseball field and we got the plastic tray full of chips and the, the yeah, cheese sauce go, right out of the can, right. and then they put the pickled jalapeno. Now the pickled jalapeno, when you pickle a vegetable or a jalapeno, especially that or a habanero, uh -huh. and this is a serrano chili, you can tell it's long and skinny, mm -hmm. and they go considerably, they go like this in heat. This would be how they jump up in heat. Me One. Low, medium, and high, high. Okay. Okay, but if you take salt and vinegar, it takes the heat out of them. Okay, um, two more questions. What's cooking on the stove behind you? We have a simple green chili and tomatillo sauce, because mm -hmm. that's gonna be the base to go over the chilaquiles. Mm -hmm. Like you said, you had it in Cabo, and you said they served it for breakfast, and you're like, what the heck is that? Right, and that's <laughs> what they do there, right? Yeah, yeah, so, well, that's what they, that's what they're born to do. Okay. You know, that's what they were brought up with from their abuelitas. And then below me, can I get this out, even though it's a little bit sloppy? It's sloppy, let's, All right, let's well, just wait for the reveal. Do you wanna tell what it is? Well, we just have a simple, your favorite, Mike and I are alumni of an old company called Chi Chi's. We are. I was a server. <laughs> and I was a line cook, and I cooked a lot of tortillas every day. Yeah, and you were also responsible for some chili con queso sometimes? Some chili con queso, and that is your, I think, absolute favorite thing. You could put it on an old glove, and I honestly I would eat it. I think if you were a warrior, you would like to be put onto a raft, floated down, <laughs> 
yes. covered in chili con queso yes. and set a fire. That's what I would like. That's how I want to go. If I ever, if I ever can go. All right. So we're gonna assemble some nachos. We'll talk about chili con queso. Yeah. We'll talk about salsa verde. Yeah, we, we have some burrito beans in there too. We didn't even get to this kind of cheese. That is cotilla, and right. we'll talk about that later. We're gonna build some awesome nachos when we come back. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Michael. All right, back to the ball field. to Valley Spotlight in the Pesto Test Kitchen. And oh uh, man, I don't even know what to say. I think I'm so I did, excited right now. If I gave you a gallon of that for your birthday. Absolutely <laughs> perfect. You don't I mean, have to see what size is the I the sword I gave you. Yes. No, well, I don't know. It's, it's pretty close. So we're making our own nachos because yes. our theme today is baseball. Yeah. And you and I, if you didn't see the first part of the show, used to work at Chi Chi's. We did. Gosh, what, 20, 25, 30 years ago? 1983 I started. Yeah, mine was 90, 91. Oh, you're, you're a young guy. Yeah, I was just a pup back then. But they had the best, in my opinion, the best chili con queso. They really I did. They did it. a great job with their chili con queso. Simple, simple recipe based off of that famous cheese that's in a brick that's yeah. soft that grandma used to have all right. the time in the, in the cupboard. So. It's got some peppers in there and it's yes. got the heavy cream and stuff. So we're gonna build our nachos this way, yeah. but we're doing it three different ways. Yeah. Go so, ahead, tell so us about uh, yours. I'm gonna do the chilaquiles, which chili is more killings. of a traditional Mexican dish. Served for breakfast a lot, so I'm gonna take that beautiful green chili and tomatillo salsa. Uh -huh. And like I said, this is a warm dish and it's gonna help to soften those tortillas. You know, and a lot of times, look at how good that looks, doesn't it? Does look good. A lot of times, then they take a lot of times, they take over last night's borracho beans or refried beans or whatever they okay. have. So I'm gonna put a little bit of refried beans on there. Oh my God, look at that, Michael. That's legit. That is legit. Too bad they don't have that at the ballpark. I know. You know right? what I mean? And then I'm gonna take some pico de gallo, of course, some pico. Yeah. Some pico de gallo. Then I'm gonna take some cilantro and some chives. And mm -hmm. you know me, I like spice. Yeah. I'm gonna go with a little bit of serrano chili. Now those, the fresh ones are hotter than They're the pickled ones? They're quite hotter, and you never know. It's like a box of chocolates. Oh, really? You don't know what you're gonna get until you taste it. Is the pepper the hot part of the seeds? It's the seeds. It is the seeds. It is the seeds. Okay. And I'm gonna sneak behind you. All right. And I'm just gonna take some of that beautiful cotilla cheese, which the cotilla is a lot like feta. It's got the salt, not quite as salty. But look at that, is that not amazing? That looks amazing. Now what yeah. are you gonna do? I'm going with chili con queso. You're going classic. Yeah, I'm going classic. And I'm done. No, I'm just kidding. No, at at Chi-Chi's you would be done. <laughs> no, I would and I would be happy and I'd pay the dollar ninety nine, <laughs> and I'd walk out with a very full belly. I'll work on that a little bit more later. But I also like the black beans. I'm not much for refried beans. No, you like the, the black beans But better? I like the black beans okay. much better. Now do you like a pickled jalapeno or do you like the traditional? I would take a couple of these. Not a ton. I'm not a, a lot of that. Okay. I do like a little crunch with it. Okay, so you're gonna put a little bit of this. So this in cabbage? Mexico they usually really don't use lettuce. They use shredded cabbage. Has a lot more crunch, a lot more depth of flavor. So I like that. Now you're going with a little pineapple. I know this doesn't really go with it, but I really like it. Okay, that's so fine. So I'm gonna do it. And if you're making nachos, there's no real wrong answer. There is no wrong answer. And I do like this um, pico de gallo. Also. And we, I've had the salsas, like mm -hmm. during the break and stuff, I took, I had some of the salsas and they're both really So what good. I'm gonna do then, I'm gonna take and make like a Frankenstein nacho. Right here? I love it. All right, I can I this. eat while you So do we'll it? call it a friend of mine that I used to work for, a trash can nacho. So we're just gonna take, and I put, um, I put these crispy fried pork rinds on the nachos, which I think is just really- Do real. they do that in Mexico or are you just gonna uh, make yes, that they, up? Well, they do chicharrones a different way. Uh -huh. You can put them in tacos, you can do whatever way you want to. So we're gonna put this over the top, mm -hmm. all that beautiful queso, and that's gonna just warm that up a little bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the salsa rojo. Oh yeah. You hear the cracklings? They're actually cracking because of the I heat. Do. The pork rinds are yeah, cracking. Yeah, they're crackling. And I crack this Okay, beer. just like that, a little bit of this. Mm -hmm. And it's already got the cheese, I think that's good. Mike, you wanna try mine? Yeah, oh, I do. You cracked me a beer? I did, I'm gonna, but I do wanna try this because it looks so good. Thank you. This is salsa verde, is that what you, is that, that what Chili verde. Chili verde. Oh, so good. Is that ridiculous? Yeah, I, I, I Ooh, it does have a kick. It does. Better hurry up with my beer. Legit. This is not your average ballpark. No. But, it really isn't. But it's okay. just a level up. Go ahead, spray the spray the kitchen. <laughs> My friend? If we were Baker Mayfield, we'd shotgun this at the baseball game. Now, you can make this at home mm -hmm. for the cost of one beer at your favorite ballpark. Absolutely true. <laughs> Absolutely true. All this stuff is very inexpensive and it's a lot of fun. Well, thank you, Pesto. Thank you, Michael. Back and to our, our old days, our beginnings. <laughs> this You're one. out. Yeah, no kidding. All right. Well, we'll put that in a container for you to take that home. Perfect. Back to the ballpark. <laughs> 